We'll have this discussion. Discussion? What discussion? This is a discussion. Combustion. Coming to you from Denver, Colorado. This is Discussion Combustion Podcast with your hosts, Kevin Batstone and Arthur Raw. We are good. The satellites will come down and just sing good us, take us out. Yeah. Power shut up. No, it's, it's real. Thanks for tuning in to Discussion Combustion. And on this episode, we got Mike Patchen back, the glorious, the wonderful. Um, you want to do a little disclosure, right, Kev? I mean, yeah. I mean, I do it on social media. But look, this episode is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be monetized. Uh, we're going to have fun. We're going to talk about real stuff. We're going we're gonna to go back in time and look at where we were then to where we are now, where we're going. Some of these are opinions. None of this is necessarily fact-based. We're not trying to offend anyone here. We're here to have a good time. And this man right here that we respect so much, Mike Patchen, you've had us to your house. Coming back. This is like your there seventh time yeah. on Discussion in Combustion. Chair. Welcome back. We love yeah. the hat, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I got the tinfoil hat tonight. Thought we'd kick it yeah. off. I love it. You know, maybe dive deep into into some conversations, bring a little little light attitude about it with the tinfoil hat. Uh-huh. Have you worn that you know? in public? No, I haven't. <laughs> but, I mean, I've question. been speaking my mind for the better part of my 42 years. And, yeah. you know, for some of us who weren't afraid to talk truth to power, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago before it really kind of picked up steam and was cool to do. You know, we're kind of in our Super Bowl right now. So I'm feeling, you know, pretty good about myself, pretty good about things. You know, a little little wary about what road we're on, but interested mm. to see where we go. And, you know, just uh, pretty, pretty proud to be an early mover in the truth movement. Small, you know, person overall in it. But you look back at some of the things you said to people and some of the papers you may have wrote in high school and college and, mm-hmm. you know, some of the people that you've listened to. And, you know, a lot of us have stayed true to our path, true to our course. Yeah. And right now we're kind of looking around like, dang. You know, well, here it well is. I just, yeah. just, just kind of want to give a little prelude mm-hmm. because, like, Mike, you've earned my respect over time. You've known us for, like, pretty much five years. Yeah. And I will say this about you is – you will have your opinion, and um, maybe a lot of people don't agree with it, but you're always really respectful to people. And I, I've always admired that about you because you don't mind talking about, like, tough things or off-cusp things in a respectful way where you're not, like, cornering people and, like, being like, no, I'm right. Because you know how people get into those kind of conversations. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I kind of wanted to give you a compliment on that because how you handle some of these, like, different viewpoints on looking at which a lot of this stuff has come true, like it's it's done out of respect and it's and it's like classy. Yeah, you know? I mean, you're not going to force, you know, it, we're going through a period essentially awakening, right? More people are waking up to an objective reality of what's actually going on and starting to see through, you know, smoke and mirrors, so to speak, right? And we're bringing it up before we started the show so if you look back at the series that we've kind of d- done, you know, so far you can call it the Doom Loop series, <laughs> the Doom, right? Doom loop and we we spoke about cycles. The one cycle we mm-hmm. didn't get into a whole lot was the astrological cycle. We just came out of Pisces and we entered Aquarius, and Aquarius is all about sort of enlightenment and people opening their eyes and seeing more. And you're seeing the pace of people's enlightenment really tilt and pick up. You, you can explain things to people, but it's you know, like Mark Twain said, I believe. Um, he said something to the effect of, it's easier to fool a man than convince he'd been fooled. I just dropped that quote right. last week. Yeah, if someone doesn't want to be convinced that they've been fooled, you can hoot, holler, hem all day. They're not going to get it. If you keep just dropping small breadcrumbs on people, then eventually they're going to get it. And that's yeah. what you're seeing right now. There's people with huge platforms that just kind of started getting it a few years ago and making a huge impact. And congrats, hats off. Tinfoil hat off to them. <laughs> right? They're making a sweet impact. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And hopefully that pace of people getting it outpaces the pace of people who don't want people to get it. Yeah. You know, that to me is the end of this cycle that we're in as we leave third turning, entering into fourth turning, mm-hmm. which we spoke about in that last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that will determine the leader of the pack is the globe enters into a new phase of objective reality. And, and I think we're within a few months of seeing where that lands and then moving forward from there. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, if anything, about planetary mitosis? Are you familiar? I'm not. So it's basically the idea of two realities existing as one side by side. So like you mentioned, the objective reality and then kind of people that are asleep, so to speak. Yeah. This is kind of a term that's been new to me, something my brother's really passionate about. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there and see what your thoughts were. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's interesting. I've, you know, I'm familiar with, you know, 
essentially like the multiverse where there's multiple Kevins <clears throat> right now doing multiple things in multiple realities. You know, when I say objective truth, you know, the the one piece component that we talked about, we spoke about in one of the previous episodes was cultural Marxism, right? And we hit that term before a lot of people were using it and now more people are using it, which is fantastic. And part of Marxism, which is tied into communism, is getting people to have ideologies that don't make sense, right? And when Orwell wrote 1984 and he wrote two plus two equals five, that doesn't make sense, but people will demand that it does. That's subjective. They're demanding that that has um, a foothold in reality when it just can't the sun does not rise in the west and set in the east it rises in the east and sets in the west mm -hmm. and you know subjective reality or really difficult political ideology will demand that that's untrue right so objective truth we've gotten even away from that so people can't even have conversations because they'll tilt back into an ideology that just can't even make sense to begin with mm -hmm. You know, at a base level, at a base level. Yeah, they almost kind of go back to the binky a bit, like the safety net yeah. at times, right? Right. It's a little, it's it's a little bit scary at times yeah. for people. They don't want to accept new information, like cognitive yeah. dissonance almost. Yeah, absolutely. You know, normalcy bias, right? I'd rather agree to. We saw that during COVID. Yeah. Right. Like it. If if I wear a mask and a mask stops incoming air but you don't have a mask on, you just lessened my mass ability to stop incoming air. That doesn't make sense. That's two plus two equals five. And people built an ideology out of that and then cheered on punishment to others who didn't participate in that false ideology. Mm -hmm. And it caused a lot of division, strife, death, businesses closing, difficult, you know, difficulties with children. Like the, the kids aren't even coming out the same. They're not even maturing the same anymore. And people are cheering that on. My question right now these days is where are those people at? Right. Where'd you go? Where'd point. your ideology go? Are you going to clean up the mess? No, you're not. You're on to the next thing. Yep. Right. And that cycle and frequency and next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing has increased. And if you look way back, I mean, go back to 1913, right? Because to me, that's where I like to start the conversation. It's only increased in frequency and density. Right. So now like I think how we're, often a distraction is like propagated, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Propagated in a new piece of ideology to feed off. Right. Like mm. look at the Ukraine, like the same people that were cheering on Ukraine, Ukraine, U Ukraine were the same people who were going to get Nazis and defeat fascism. Well, guess what? The Ukraine army is being led by Nazis. And if you go back into the 19 teens, like I just spoke about, right, that was a, 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 a that was a foothold for fascists. Mm -hmm. Right. And that land was given to uh, Rothschild. Right. By the communists. Right. Rothschild came in. There was a huge fascist uprising in Ukraine. And then, you know, that's been a center for globalist activity ever since. No kidding. We're there. Yeah. So how could you be against fascism and you're going to beat the Nazis while simultaneously cheering on the Ukraine? Those two things can exist at once, but yet people's ideologies are allowing them to. If we can't get over that, then we're going right off the cliff and the cliff is bearing down on us. It's close. Right. And then you have confirmation bias, right? There's a yeah. lot of that out there, though. Absolutely. I, I like to call it I'm right .com, trust me, bro net. Sure. Right. Everybody's going to find information to defend their position on it. And then you just have the folks that are like, well, it seems like the right thing to do. We see it going on with Palestine. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you do. And, you know, um, I wrote a paper for someone in college. I used to do that a lot. I'd get paid in beer because I could write them really quick. And Martin Luther King was writing in his diaries while he was in jail in Birmingham. And he wrote that it wasn't the people in the civil rights movement that worried about that worried him, right? Because he understood them and, and what they were fighting for and where they were going. And it wasn't people in the segregation movement because he understood them and understood what they were fighting for. It was the middle ground that didn't really get anything. And he labeled them more dangerous than anyone. And the middle ground is continuing to be the more dangerous because it doesn't take much to wave a shiny thing in front of them and have them say, ooh, Sway over their there. opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, it's a really interesting time. And, you know, if people would take these subjects that they say they're experts at and just go back and read up and then humble yourself down to know that you're really not an expert at anything, 
you know, I'm super proud of the fact that I'm an expert at nothing. I'm a jack of a lot of trades. I'm an expert at absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of little stuff done, and sometimes I don't finish projects. But I get into a lot, and mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. is interesting. But how uninteresting is someone who thinks they're a master at everything? You're a really boring person. Oh, absolutely. You're not allowing any room for growth, new knowledge, no nothing. No, it's absolutely almost like a narcissistic not. approach. Yeah, absolutely. And again, back to Ukraine, like post World War II, when they were doing the whole um, Nuremberg, you know, trials, Alan Dulles went ahead and opted all the fascists that were in Ukraine out. Why is that? Hmm. Well, they were a holdover group. They got to sit there and hang ten. Right. And now we're leveraging them to push back on the Russians. Right. I mean, it's proxy warfare to it's like, proxy warfare yeah, to its greatest. Right? And it's been a great foothold and, for the neocons. Yeah. Right. But you're not fighting the establishment by supporting that, irregardless if you think you are, or you aren't. And that's it is subjective. Reality is really taking over a lot of people's brains. Right. Mind virus. Absolutely. And you yeah. see them on the overpasses driving down I-25, you know, yeah. everyone out there with their Ukraine flags and whatnot. And. Here today, gone tomorrow, and on to so, the next. So thing. I mean, okay. Exactly, so, right? so here's the thing: I would prefer to see Ukraine defeat Russia here. Like that's my personal opinion. I, I mean, are we like uh, differing there? I in, would just like to room? see us completely out of everything and yeah, like, we, isolated. I, I, as it doesn't country. make sense to be why we. Well, yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't know why we need to spend so much money. Is yeah. that the the issue? Is the American dollars that are being spent on like the proxy war and like. You know, all that stuff. The like, issue is just the deeper program over there, like what's actually going on, right? Because the metabiota is over there, and that's the gain-of-function labs, which are responsible for a significant amount of the viruses that are floating around right now. There's an absolute – it's a hub for child trafficking, and we all know how, you know, New World Order globalists keep control of the political minions is through pedophilia. Uh, Ukraine is a hubbub for that. That's a fact, right? It's also, also a mon money laundering zone, right? Mm -hmm. When we start wars Warfare. and we fund them with $60 billion, only like $10 billion of it hits the shores yeah. of Ukraine. They sent the head of the fucking CIA over to the Ukraine and patted Zelensky on the head and said, dude, dude, you got to slow the grift down, brother. $400 million in your pocket? People are starting to notice. Everyone in your cabinet mm -hmm. is driving a half million dollar car and you're buying condos in Miami. Chill out. Mm. Like, that's the reality of the situation, the boots on the ground reality mm. over there. Yeah. Right? Like, how long can we sustain that as a country? And the answer is we can't. No, we can't. Right? We're, our, we're, we're well, shot as then, an economy. But, okay, it's so, over, right? It, it, like, yeah. it's so why, why continue to sustain this as a country? Like, what do we think is, like, the big, the big gain is to deplete Russia's ability f to have a fighting force and like like what's what's the yeah so right now so in 2014 victoria newland did what's called a color revolution over there right victoria newland is a neocon victoria newland's father and grandfather have direct relation to the bolshevik communists that took over russia right and when trotsky got kicked out of the communist revolution in russia he came to mexico and he started the neocon republican movement in our country okay the neocon so I, I don't know any of this I don't right Oh, yeah, so that was started by communists from Russia, like the Bolsheviks, right? Okay. So Victoria Newland has direct ties to that. Victoria Newland has been high up in the State Department for decades. She did a color revolution in the Ukraine to push back on Russia. If you study on World War II, which I was literally doing on the truck on the way down here, mm. before, so 1913, you had the start of the Federal Reserve, right? Who started the Federal Reserve? Uh, Rothschild, Rockefeller, Schiff, Warby, and J.P. Morgan. And I do believe right? like that's all BS, the Federal well, Reserve. So, so they started we won't get that, into that right? right now, though. Well, well, we are, right? So right now, right? So they started the okay. Federal Reserve, and that was signed off by Woodrow Wilson. They went to Jekyll Island, and they said that they had a quorum in Congress to pass it, but they didn't. They paid people off to say that they were there. Woodrow Wilson was either having an affair with his wife with a woman or a man, and they got him under blackmail and said, sign off on this, and he did. So mm. the Federal Reserve started up. They wanted an ROI on that investment because now they own the currency of the United States of America. Mm. So they said, hey, Russia czar, we're coming over. Rockefeller's going to put his oil there. Morgan and Rothschild are going to put their central banks there, and we're coming in. We're going to globalize the world. Mm. And the Russian czar said, fuck you. No, you're not. So the, the guys who started the Federal Reserve said, fuck you. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Look up Train of Gold. 
If you look up the train of gold, they took $20 million in gold. They sent it over to Britain. Britain put it on a train, sent it through Germany, and that's what funded Lenin, Stalin, and Trotsky. That's the Bolshevik Revolution. That's part of World War II no one talks about, and there, there's, there's a reason it, for that, Is a train that, right? of gold sent from the United States? 100%. Yes. Through Britain to yep. Germany. Yep. To fund the communist like resolu- the, re- revolution yeah. in, in in Russia, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the Bolsheviks, non-Russians. Okay. They take over Russia. They collapse it. They slaughter like 50 million people, including 7 million people in the Ukraine. Look mm-hmm. up Kulaks. That's called the Holdemore. If you look up the Holdemore, that's where the communists were starving the good people of Ukraine out. Mm-hmm. But Kulak is working class people, right? So we're working class people. So... Ukraine was gifted back to Rothschild as a thank you for Mm. funding that war, right? Now, here's the funny part. When they kicked that whole thing off, Rockefeller said, yo, this is great. I'm going to double down on my investments. Hey, Hitler uh, Hitler and your buddies, come on over here. And he brought them over and he funded them. He sent people over to groom them and said, dude, your people are about to get sick of this communist thing in a few years. Why don't mm-hmm. you run? And he funded that shit. The banks funded both sides of that war and smashed them together. That's what World War II was. Mm-hmm. World War II was an investment for globalists to get super, super rich, and it worked. Post-World War II to now is an industrialization of that process. So when you ask why we're in Ukraine, mm-hmm. it's the same reason that communists and fascists fought each other. It's because people are making money off of it. And yeah. I know we say that stuff and it comes out bland, but if you can really sink your teeth into understanding yeah. that, then you start to go, oh, wow, like we need out of all this stuff. Like mm-hmm. the world is not this violent and competitive without people smashing us together. Mm-hmm like they did in a coordinated fashion in World War II. Mm-hmm. Well, and I feel like that's where a lot of the division comes from, too, even that's, like, perpetuated in the United States and how there's all these differences and how, like, oh, we're so close to the Civil War, another Civil War. Like, you know, and there's all this all this perpetuation of, like, this fear and division. And generally, like, I, I've, I've talked to some people who have a little bit different opinion than I do. I'm, I'm a bit more traditional, but I do believe in like uh, some of the modern movements. It, it just depends to what extent and how much do I allow that to control my life. But, you know, when people are against each other and arguing, they're distracted from what's really going on. So keeping the United States population distracted, it's, it's powerful, that, that yeah. could be like a proxy, proxy yeah. war yeah. from... We've learned that. Yeah, from like even TikTok could be proxy war on that, like a cyber warfare where yeah. you are feeding population, uh, propagating things what, that shows different opinions. You know, so like they're attacking us too and like all, all this other shit. But I do agree with the corporations yeah. of the world have been running it, are still running it, and are like all playing us against each other. Yeah. Do you want to jump in quick? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, before we get too far off that, because I wanted to go into old world order here, going back to, to Rothschild. Yeah. And going before 1913 a bit. Yeah, let's do um, it. But yeah, I mean, because we're going to dive into modern events, I'm sure, here mm-hmm. in a bit. And just yeah. so, how we ended up there and how what we've learned and what's changed. But I, I like the way we're unpacking the history on it. And I forgot my point outside of that. So let me just jump in quick because Kevin is always coming in really good with like solid points. Let me just kind of take those today and rip through a little bit of history. Go okay. ahead. So then you have World War II, right? And our boys get convinced to go over there and everyone's rah, rah, rah on this thing on. The banks are funding it. The banks are killing it, right? Industrialization goes through the roof. We're printing money. We got the gold. Everybody's getting paid. Everybody's getting rich. Boys are dying, right? We, we got the media narrative, and then the war stops, mm-hmm. okay? So Kevin's saying, okay, so now there's still perpetuated divisions going on. Here's a great, because what I'll do tonight is just drop some items that you can go on YouTube, go on the internet, and start to look, and then do your own damn research. <clears throat> if you go on YouTube and watch Operation Gladio, that comes post-World War II, because now the banks are like, dude, we funded this thing called Bolshevik communism, and then we started this thing called fascism. And when the good people in Russia, Spain, Italy, and Germany got sick of this thing called communism, Spain, Italy, and Germany elected this thing called fascism. And when they smashed together, boy, we made a ton of money and gained mm-hmm. a ton of power. Operation Gladio was the continuation of that 
post-World War II. Don't you think it's odd that we fought with the Russians to beat the fascists and the day the world, the war ended, it's all like of a sudden enemy. we were right back yeah. to Russia? Isn't that weird? That but it's cyclical, mm-hmm. and we've talked about cycles. Look what happened on September 10th, 2001, over in Afghanistan. We were funding the Taliban and helping them fight against the Northern Alliance, Russia, and 9-11 happened. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. Taliban's our enemy, and now we're funding Northern Alliance. And the people of America were like, oh, okay, that was a quick pivot, send billions of dollars over there. Yeah. So this stuff is continuing to happen well, over well, and over. It's not even the American people saying S- send the billions. It's the people making these weird bills with sneaking in hidden agendas. It and is like, a little bit of that, but also like people get duped, right? Because if you just saw the October 7th thing, they claim there was 40 dead babies, and that got people to rah, 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 let's go get Gaza. That was the same trick that they used in Iraq, number one. That gal sat there in front of Congress. She was 15 years old. Her dad was an ambassador. They paid her buku bucks to sit there, and they had Hill and Knowlton, look it up, Hill and Knowlton PR firm trained her to sit there and cry like an actor and say, Mm. I saw 40 dead babies in incubators and they threw them on the floor and they died. That was bullshit. There was never even 40 fucking Mm. dead babies that she saw. And 50% of the country didn't want to go to war. 50% did overnight. 85% of the country said, let's roll. And we went to Iraq one. Because of crisis acting? Crisis acting. That's what sold it. It it sold it. Hill Mm. and Knowlton PR firm trained that gal to do it. They paid her dad an ambassador. Big bucks. He went up in the political scale. We went to war. Soon as October 7th happened, they literally said 40 dead babies again. This stuff's cyclical. Mm. Operation Gladio was... After World War II, when the OSS turned into the CIA, Alan Dulles essentially started to run the CIA. He used stay-behind networks. He kept the, the best players of the communist movement and the fascist movement, and they started to funnel in money and just smash them together all over Europe. And they kept the perpetuation of communists are going to get us. The fascists were doing false flags dressed up like communists. And then they just started saying communists, communists, communists. So from the end of World War II to, I mean, look how big communism was a thing. 70s, 80s, 90s. And how many wars they perpetuated. Mm -hmm. And that was funded by the intelligence community. And that's my point is a lot of the divisions in the country are fake. They're manufactured. Mm -hmm. Real people are dying, but it's manufactured situations. Yeah. False flags in some False instances, flags, right? False flags, green flags, I, I hear that those, yeah. that term a lot. Like, yeah. I think that's the, where people get immediately upset, and obviously Alex Jones went through this with Sandy Hook, yep. is when, you know, a claim is made that, like, nobody died. And, and, and that's, you know, obviously he's paid ramifications for that. I don't know what your position is on that as far as his payback. I'm going to keep quiet Hook. on that one. That's fair. Yeah. Um, but, we, you know, in other examples, you know, people are like, well, you're sitting here and saying no. We're no one's saying that. We're, the uh, event happened, right. but the, the yeah. build up to it, the smoke and mirrors, as you worded it, is People exactly actually we died during COVID, but the hype far outweighed how many people had to die right. that's a false flag that is a false flag covid was a psyop covid was a thousand percent a psyop 90 percent of the people who died were in hospitals 90 percent of the people who died in a hospital were hooked up to remdesivir and one of those fucking ventilators that's what killed them well it's, it's the same thing with aids uh-huh. more people died of the azt treatment than they did of hiv or aids sure well and let's not forget too like the, the influenza b you know, we'd have to check the numbers on, it, of course, but it, it was killing in the hundreds of thousands a year. All of a sudden, that influenza B or whatever right. influenza strain went away, disappeared. Right, and so you got to factor in all that too. I think, like right. there, there, there's it, been there's been disease killing people. And if you look people. at cycles again, the same PCR test that they use up used to ramp up the false positives in COVID was the same test that they used to ramp up the false positives during the HIV scare. Right. There's thousands of articles, thousands of peer-reviewed studies that out of 60, 60, 66,000 positives for HIV, if you really dug in and did a genetic test, only like 30 people ended up staying positive on that. 30. And correct me if out I'm wrong, 60, Mike. Out of 60,000, 30 were positive. 30 out of 60,000. 30. So do the math. 10% would be 6,000. 1% would be 600. 0.1% would be 60, 0.05% would be 30. So, 0.05. so they were 99.95% inaccurate, and yet that same PCR test was used during COVID, and now that same PCR test is being used to test chicken herds for bird flu, yep, and this. we've called off more mm-hmm. livestock in the past three years than we have in a 
decade. Yeah, and we have chick, chick, chicken uh, plants going up in flames. Yeah. But didn't, on the PCR test, the inventor of that, didn't he die right before? 100%. And he was speaking out going, dude, this is not what this thing is used for. Yeah. It's a general and then he test. Died. He died. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily yeah. saying I was coordinating. I'm just right. stating a fact. He died. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Right. When Correct. PCR tests were being introduced yep. to say whether you're positive or negative. He spoken out and said, this is not how you use this test. He won a Nobel Prize for creating the test. Yeah, you would think he would know. Huh. Right. Just like the guy that created <laughs> ivermectin won a Nobel Prize for it. But yep. then uh, one of the pharmaceutics companies that held the patent came out and was like, oh, yeah, uh, we've been using it for 30 years, but. Uh, no good anymore. Well, now that now that whole narrative's changed too. That they were saying it was veterinarian ivermectin is yeah. what wasn't good. Like it, everything is kind of changing now. Like Fauci was on was grilled earlier. I'm sure yep. you saw that on Monday with Marjorie yep. Taylor Greene right. ripping into him. Your thoughts on that? It's soft disclosure. So this is how they get away with stuff. If you want an interesting to look up, get on your search engine and type in 1980 bear. B A Y E R, like the chemical Bayer. company, the uh, drug company. Like the aspirin company? Yeah. Type in bear tainted blood. In the 80s, bear was taking tainted blood with HIV and hepatitis, reconstituting it and selling it out into the hemophiliac community, poisoning them, and they were dying by the hundreds of thousands. They went under congressional hearing and uh. laughed in their congressional hearings and they even read their minutes of their corporate board and they were laughing going dude we're killing it who gives a shit about these people anyway these tragedies happen the media tells you you're a kook for talking about it Mm -hmm. they slander people they give it a certain period of time to die down then they do a soft disclosure they have congressional hearings the public settles down the next tragedy happens it gets wiped under the rug Mm -hmm. and then they bring it back in 10 years and they do the same damn thing they do it again And, and that's why i mean just the frequency of things right now it's, it's interesting i mean it's, it's all pretty it, it is pretty it's all concerning yeah like it's really concerning like that we're all getting somewhat played and unless you're actually thinking about this shit so it's like what what do you do what so what are you doing to like now that you know do you you can still keep going down history but a bunch of questions yeah. keep going in my head and one of them is like you know what do you do when you know all this information other than speaking on dcpc of course yeah i mean you know, again, I, and it's not a me thing. There's plenty of people and plenty of people way smarter than me. But like, you know, in, in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was kind of getting it for my age. I wrote a paper, and I don't remember the exact year. It was very early on, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. And I wrote a paper about carnivore. Carnivore was one of the original programs that the FBI rolled out, and, and it chewed through landline data, and then they were storing it. I actually just heard that recycled on a podcast not too long ago, really? and I was like, nice. I kind of saw this at a young age, right? And, and again, Ted Gunderson saw it 40 years before. David Ir- Irving saw it 40 years before. Alex Jones saw it 40 years before. There's a whole community of people who have seen it. I mean, I've just been lightly getting ready for it the whole time. What, right? what, what is it? It? Yeah. It. So it to me is if – so we talked about the turnings, right? We talked about the fork turning. And yeah. every 85 years there's an economic collapse and a global war. It, you can trace turnings back to the 1400s, but in the U.S., our first turning was 1776. Mm-hmm. Monetary collapse, war. 80 years later was 1860. That's the 1861. That's the start of the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Monetary collapse, war. 80 years later is 1940. That's World War II. Monetary mm-hmm. collapse, war. 80 years from 1940 is right now. I'm expecting a monetary collapse and a global war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're certainly headed that way. Yeah. Right. You look at what's going on with, like, we talk about Palestine, we talk about Ukraine, we talk about, mm-hmm. you know, where's North Korea and all this. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I'm Taiwan's seeing those videos being surrounded. Pop out about yeah. North Korea, Korea and all <laughs> did you, the did you, Little Rocket Man. Speaking yeah. of North Korea, we'll touch on that real quick. Did you see that that video that got put out of um, the propaganda that North Korea is putting out to their people? It's like a music video of all the kids, like, hugging his leg and they're, like, singing and dancing together. And, like, it shows a really, really happy yeah. life over in North Korea. Uh-uh. Yeah. It was a little alarming to watch. Yeah. Really. It just, something doesn't sit right with me about that. Yeah. But that's North Korea. No one really knows what's going on in there. It's kind of like how Iran says there's zero homosexuals. Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's interesting statistics when they zero them out. Yeah. Yeah. When they zero them out. Yeah. Yeah. And China has like 95% economic growth year over year, right? Like, yeah. No, I haven't. But I mean, it's interesting to listen to people who've came from communist countries and show up in the U.S. And they're like, oh, I was told quite a bit different this is yep. this is not what i thought and it's way better yeah you know? so so I there's a lot there's a lot of yep. flashpoints right 
a lot of likely flashpoints for America specifically to get pulled into a, a conflict. Also, we have bases all over the place. So, like, we are very spread out. Military-wise? Yeah. And, um, and, t- and like, we're kind of closing in these other countries to a certain extent, too, like our, our rivals. But I really think that one of the biggest flashpoints, in my opinion, is, like, the Israel-Palestine one. I feel like that one's a big one. It is. China would have to make a move on Taiwan. For, but I feel like we would just end up treating it like Ukraine if that happened. Um, all the straits, like where maritime traffic goes through, I feel like any of those choke, choke points where we send carrier fleets and shit, like those are all like heavy. W- what do you think is like the heaviest flashpoint? Or is it here in America, like where we have an internal conflict? Even Yeah. Like, th- like I, that could even. And, and to be honest, I, I would be better off listing flashpoints and putting them into an order. Mm. I think any one of them could go i think it's obviously very purposeful you know um if there's an economic collapse which essentially we're in and we're band-aided and triaging it the best way to avoid the public knowing is to go to war Mm -hmm. um but also this war if it really continues to ramp up is going to be much different than any other war yeah you know as einstein said you know i don't know how world war three will be fought but world war four will be fought with sticks and stones Right. So that's in my head. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at this um, Ukraine conflict. Right. And Putin has said multiple times, like, here's my red lines. And we continue to cross them Mm -hmm. after we say six months previous that we won't cross them, including the long range missiles to be sent Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's telling you the areas that they're battling for aren't ethnically Russia or historically Russia are kidding you or lying to you are inept through a historical lens. Right. Ukraine was the birthplace for modern Russia. Fact. Right. So it's super volatile. I personally am more worried about Russia, Ukraine um, in a sense of the U.S. is going to cross a red line with Russia purposely to pull NATO in. Mm -hmm. And when I look at Israel, Palestine, I think Israel is completely unhinged right now. And um the more they push, I think you could see I'm less worried about Israel and Palestine and more worried about Israel, Iran, because Iran has also drawn several red mm-hmm. lines and said, no way. If you know who Pepe Escobar is, he's a highly rated journalist. Yeah. And when I say journalist, I don't mean like, you know, the people today that just yell orange man bad. I mean, yeah. an actual journalist. He put out a tweet with raw information um, after the hit on the Iranian embassy and then Iran went to strike back. It's rumored that Israel sent an F-35 with a nuke towards Iran and they were going to do a high altitude explosion for an EMP strike. Now people came out and said, no, no, I respect Pepe. He does fabulous work, but I think he's inaccurate. So there's been some really interesting back and forth with highly regarded people. Seymour Hearst came out and said, I think Pepe's on to something. Seymour Hearst accurately reported on the U.S. blowing up the Nordstrom pipeline. Seymour Hearst is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and also known is extremely high level when he says something that goes. So it's an interesting piece that hasn't quite been confirmed 100 percent, but has not been denied 100 yeah. percent either if you think about that even if it's 85 percent possibly could have happened there could have been a nuke on an f-35 on its way to iran to explode at high altitude and then all hell is going to break loose yeah That's all so we're take. that close yeah. right now so yep. so right. okay so there's there's a lot to unpack there totally. but I, I thought about a question that I, I'm really curious about so we're talking about how corporations ultimately are clashing and creating and clashing sides profiting off of this yeah so JP Morgan like I, I don't know all the corporations but like exactly but so are there like is there like a couple different groups like does China have theirs and then like there's like the Russian corporations and then the American or like NATO corporations or something. And then like technically, even though it looks like there's hundreds of countries and thousands of countries in the world, it's actually like- 194. Three, oh, 194 countries, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, but it's like really technically three 
different groupings of corporations that are like battling each other. Yeah, is, so is that kind of what it looks yeah, like? Yeah, if or? you so if you want to look at what corporations run the world, look at steering committees. What a steering committee is, it's a boardroom of people who make decisions. Your steering committees are Bilderberg Group. They're meeting this week. Uh, Trilateral Commission made in 1971 where David Rockefeller um, funded Brzezinski. Brzezinski's kid is in the White House with Biden. And Brzezinski's daughter is Mika Brzezinski, who's on TV every morning on Morning Joe. Morning Joe, Joe and Mika, Mika Brzezinski. So that's Trilateral Commission. Club of Rome, you can listen to Colin Giorgio, Giorgio, who ran... Uh, the UN and Club of Rome for 18 years. He just did something in March of 2023, came out with some disclosure and said, yes, the 8 million kids that go missing every year are trafficked by the global elite for pedophilia. So Club of Rome, Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group, uh, CFR, Council on Foreign Relations. If you look at where Biden was sitting there laughing about how, ha, 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 I was in Ukraine and I said, you bet your ass you'll fire the attorney who's looking into my son before I get on this plane or you won't get out your get your $8 billion. The banner behind him says Council on Foreign Relations. Those are the people who run the show. The people on the boards of those groups mm-hmm. are the people who own, like, the holding company. Like, Disney is a holding company, and, and they own, what, like, 200 different large mm-hmm. organizations. She would be part of one of those steering committees. Those people meet annually and discuss stuff behind closed doors for directionality mm-hmm. on how the world is going to move year to year. Mm-hmm. Steering committees. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you just labeled them all out. Can you go just the yep. go through them? The- yep, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, Council on Foreign Relations, okay. Trilateral Commission, Club of Rome, Bilderberg. Bilderberg, okay. Start there. Bilderberg, for decades, was called a conspiracy theorist, and Alex Jones would do man on the street in front of Bilderberg. Mm-hmm. And now they're finally coming out going, yeah, so it's a thing, but uh, you're wrong on what it stands for. You can see the list of attendees. They now announce who it is, and then it's all done behind. So then those are your steering committees, and you've now heard of World Economic Forum, right? Mm -hmm. World Economic Forum, think of that as like the brand down here. That's the branding arm. That's the people who are getting on, you know, kind of taking what the steering committee says Mm -hmm. and funneling it down. So these are your big dogs. These are the people who actually own the central banks and actually own Disney as a whole. Then World Economic Forum is an aggregator, and they take low-level people, low-level CEOs, low-level upper management, and they say, yeah, we need you to do this in your company. We need Mm -hmm. you to get rid of the gender signs on your bathroom, and you need to tell your white employees they need to get on their knees and beg for forgiveness during HR meetings. Hooray. And the people being lectured by that have gone to the universities where they're injecting cultural Marxism into the system. And that's how the whole loop has got us to where we're at present day. Hmm. That was Simple, quite a right? That's the ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. No, that was a good totally. breakdown there. I can, yeah. I can see it visually. So, um, And so here we are today. Yeah. And into the current events and to where we're at. current events. So, yeah. So let's take it back to our series. Yeah. Right. Going back to the patch. And would we call it the doom cycle? The doom loop. The doom loop. The doom loop. Right. And let's, okay. and let's okay. kind of visit some of the things because I'm sure you have your bullet points and you came obviously extremely prepared. Um, as, as kind of like where we started, not not when we brought you in for the CBD stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. When we got into, you know, real shit and we started getting excited mm-hmm. and having these conversations. Let's go through the timeline a bit. Well, we talked about what's mm-hmm. happened, where we're at now. Yeah, cool. So we talked about cycles. We talked about the fourth turning. I think that's super important. Go on YouTube, look under Neil Howell, H-O-W-E. He wrote the book Generations, thinking that he would find similarities between differences between generations, and he found similarities. And then he wrote the fourth turning in the 90s. That will get you up to speed. We're leaving the third turning, entering into the fourth. Mm-hmm. It's always chaotic. Um, We talked about cultural Marxism. Uh, We just touched on that a little bit. That's the part of World War II that you're not supposed to talk about because people just think World War II started with fascism and they forget like the whole 40 years of terror brought to us by the communists. And what's important about that is when we talked about Operation Gladio and we said that the CIA took the best components of fascism and communism, what do you think the 60s were? 
the 60s were the injection of soft communism into the U.S. to through, get through that like, cancer like growing. Like segregation or like, no. know, or like, or the more inclusion or the civil rights movement? Like, how did that fit into Yeah, that? the communism came in with, you know, it, the entire 60s movement. If you if you go on band.video, and that's like Alex Jones's YouTube, and you look up this guy called Jay, Jay's Analysis, Jay will take these concepts and break them down super granular but super palatable. Mm-hmm. When I listened to his analysis on the 1960s, he clearly laid out that there was nothing organic about the 1960s at all. The entire thing was a manufactured movement. It was the big explosion. Or like the, the hippie stuff and like – All of it mm-hmm. was pushed by <coughs> how we just talked about steering but like, committees. But like free, free love because – so, like, I feel like, all right, so, so sorry to, like, yeah, interject. I'm just thinking about this stuff because you have these people who are putting this, this plan together. Yeah. But then there's still things that occur in society that are not according to that plan. And so, like, would things like. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah. Well, I mean, but if the crises are being created and then people are trying to do things to counteract these and there's, like, because na- I feel like natural positivity does exist and is always trying to find a way to make the world a better place. <laughs> However, the evils that be are in extremely powerful positions. Yeah, isn't that kind of like the part of the division piece, though? Like if we fast forward to now, we talk about some of the the uh, the more of the division with the you know the genders in the bathrooms, and then you have people over here trying to defend traditional stuff, right? So that kind of the division piece. Of yeah, it and it's is called a nudge unit. It's little by little by little by little. Just nudging. And it before in. you know it, things are completely changed because people with normalcy biased will take their heads and go, "Uh uh-uh, no way. You're telling me things are bad right now. I think they're good. And then 10 years go by and they go, "Eh, it's a little worse than it was, but it's significantly worse than it was. The 1960s (coughs) was manufactured by the intelligence community. There's never once been that large of a cultural swing in a society that quickly ever it was not organic and this was right before the media really blew up as far as nightly the media news, was blowing which, up which car- cultural swing exactly the 1960s the was a huge cultural swing like in in which way though from like a traditional household yeah that was like, part of like it the feminist rights. movement yeah. really mm-hmm. kicked off right you know they're just the, the way people lived they got into technology and scientism mm-hmm. way more the you know so you the f- amount of people like starting to go into church it's uh, 100% manufactured so yeah. that that wasn't yeah. people who were trying to rise to no it's people have, being have told that rights. they were doing things mm-hmm. to progress yeah. but they were being told by people who knew over time that that would digress people to get to where we're at now by influencers, so to speak, yeah. of the time. Yeah, of right? the time. Encouraging slow and folks steady, to do slow that. Slow and steady. Like what we're slow seeing and now. Steady, slow yeah. and steady. Yeah. 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 Because post-World War II, right, when McCarthy spoke out in the 50s and he was like, there's communists everywhere. Like, people were looking at communism. If you watch Oppenheimer, if you notice, a couple of those people will say, yeah, I'm a communist. But not like the – not not. they called them Russians. They didn't say Bolshevik in that movie. I think they said it once. A Bolshevik was not a Russian. So that was a little – little tidbit they didn't include they kept saying well i'm not like a bolshevik i'm not like a russian i'm this communist well Mm. mccarthy started calling people out so it was like all right straight up communism is not going to work in the u.s but soft communism over time sure shit has worked in the u.s don't believe me go look and research what the weimar republic is the weimar republic is germany before it collapsed before fascism rose What do you think was going on in the Weimar Republic? Anybody want to take a shot? I have no idea. Top three things that were going on in the Weimar Republic. Central banks printing unlimited money. Czech, U.S. Multiculturalism, meaning no nationalism. Everything went, every culture. There was no sense of what a German was or wasn't. Mm. Pedophilia, prostitution, drugs, tranny town. They were cutting children's genitals off. Sound familiar? So what, when was this in Germany? 1920s and 1930s. The YMR. Republic. Weimar Republic. Republic. That was okay. after the communists took over Russia and then spread all through Europe and landed in Germany and took over Germany and erased the German culture and said, we own this shit now. And then the economy collapsed and people went, 
well, that sucked. And at the same time, the communists were slaughtering 7 million people in the Ukraine by starvation. Kulak is a working class person. They punished the working class like they always do. So the German people were sitting there like, dude, this really sucks. And then Rockefeller went, shit, I'm going to double down. And he funded the fascist nat social movement in Germany and got Hitler and the National Socialists elected. Yeah, and that's a that part there. of World War II people don't like to talk about. Yeah, that's interesting. There's a lot to unpack there for sure. It is, but that's historic. I've watched so, a lot of World War II documentaries and never once heard about, like, the gold train. Right. I've, I've never once heard about, like, and why not? this type of stuff. Huh? Why not, right? And yeah. that's so important because mm. that, what the Bolsheviks were doing, but they were doing it very aggressively, was, like, think about it like a concentrate, like you get orange juice the bankers who own and operate the CIA, the intelligence. Okay, so here's the thing. Let me back up for a sec. So World War II collapses, boom. There's all these riches in the fascist countries, right? Um, look up Prescott Bush in his legal firm, Alan Dulles. These people were fascists, like Bush, like George Bush, like his dad, his grandpa, right? They were in a law firm. They extracted all the wealth from the fascists and brought it back over to the U.S. and funded the CIA, went to Congress and said, you're going to do this, fired up the CIA. We brought 34,000 fascists over to the U.S. Hmm. Look up Project Paperclip. We brought them over into our institutions and brought them here to develop our science and technology because the fascists were developing stuff. The communists were smashing stuff. Hmm. So they said, all right, we're going to take the fascists and run our corporations and bring all this technology, and then we're going to take this communism and, and, and dilute it down and dump it into society. So society is eating itself up with, I'm a man, and you're a woman, and you're a racist, and you're an anti-Semite, and you're a bigot. The corporations are just going to keep railing out technology and money and industry and consolidate. And before people know it, the corporations will own everything, and the people will be ripping themselves apart through soft communism, which is pretty much where we're at right now. Hmm. That's why they don't teach you about that part of World War II. Makes sense. Yeah. Which, which kind of segues into, we're going to touch on the Old World Order a little bit, which I did watch. Yeah, what'd you think? Well, I mean, I think it, it kind of it piggybacks off what you were just saying about why things aren't taught a certain way, right? And, and why history is taught through through the lens of the curriculum that it is. Right. Yeah. And so that the biggest takeaway for me was, I found it interesting, right, about the great fires of all these great, of the cities from, what was it, 1870 to about 1910-ish, right? Yeah. Cities were burning down. Yep. The way history was taught, the way these structures were built doesn't add up with horse and buggy times how yeah. are they building these massive cathedrals and things of that nature and, I, and i've had people tell me that you know stonework goes back to the 1500s and it's possible and stuff but i guess the big takeaway is history wasn't taught the way that we thought it was there's yep. things that happened that didn't make it to the curriculum and so you have to ask yourself why yeah that's that was my takeaway yeah here's an interesting piece to that when post-world war ii when we buddied up with israel um, the Mossad and the CIA started running games together. Robert Maxwell, Jujelaine Maxwell's father, came over as part of the Mossad, and he bought Hill McGraw Publishers. Hill McGraw Publishers is who we all learned out of our textbooks. That mm. was owned by Mossad. I didn't know that. Yeah, 100%. These no, are all the fun little tidbits. Uh, mm. Look up Jeff Bezos's grandfather he was intelligence community bill gates dad was intelligence community that I knew. when you look at george soros he was over there helping the fascists uh round people up um and then also if you look at uh madeline albright uh she's comes from the same world war ii community as well madeline albright was on tv saying how proud of herself she was for the iran sanctions that killed a half million children and in the background there was a painting and someone called her out and went yo girl that's my dad's painting and she was like oh shit it is and they're like bitch how'd you get that painting and she's like oh well you know my dad was rounding up jews and like killing people and shit and he just stole that shit and she's still fucking part of the Washington inner circle. You can hmm. look that shit up. 
It's amazing. Like, this is how easy it is to do, and I don't think people understand that, yeah, well, that yeah. it's this easy to do. Well, but it's intimidating, too. It's a lot of information, right? Yeah. And then the biggest the biggest question that a lot of folks are going to have is the why part of it. Right. Right? And, and so I always like to dissect the why part. Why, well, why would they hide this? Why would they hide that? And I think, in a, in a nutshell, you've encapsulated that, but what would be your answer to why was that hidden in World War II? Why were the these education books that we grew up on the way they were? Yeah. What's what the simple why is? Yeah, it's global domination, right? And my question to people who don't want to believe in that is show me one time in history where someone or some ones haven't been trying to dominate the globe. Mm -hmm. They've just never been able to. The Romans did their best. The Mongols did their best. Napoleon did his best. Mm -hmm. And now these morons are doing their best. That's true. Global domination, that's the why. Totally. Yep. And it's it's not it's not even and I think the thing that is is confusing or misleading is it's not like the United States wants global domination right, or, or a specific right. country, but it's yeah. it's all of these. Uh, what yeah. what, so, what was it called again? Yeah, like, yeah like so these, steering committees. But to your point, yeah, when like you were like, so there's out. corporations in NATO and Russia. That's also, yes, it's loosely affiliated, extremely powerful people mm. that are consolidating and working their yeah. own way up. And then you also have to understand in their own little tight knit community, like how many they're people also, do you think are in this They're community? also fighting a couple thousand. Like a like couple, couple thousand. thousand. Yeah, that's There's got to be a few whistleblowers. And, yeah. And where do they go? All right, so they here's just, a couple they, names they to randomly. look up. Yeah, here's a couple names to yeah. look up because that's a great question. Because Boeing, we're going yeah. to get to Boeing in Yeah, too. look up Gary Webb. Gary Heard Webb name. is who figured out that Ollie North was flying into cocaine on fucking Air Force jets, and then the CIA was dumping it out into the ghettos as crack in the fucking 80s, which is why we have so many problems in inner city. Gary Webb was so upset at himself because they kept saying <clears throat> stop, and he didn't, so then they started to slander him in the media. His wife divorced him. They took everything. He was so upset at himself, he shot himself in the head not once, but twice, and it was a suicide. So you can look up Gary Webb. You can look up Mark Middleton. Mark Middleton was the bag man. He's who could, he's who was running money from the Clintons to the Epsteins. When they didn't need him anymore in about 2020, Mark Middleton was so upset at himself, he not only walked out out back to hang himself with an electrical wire, but then he grabbed his shotgun, racked it, yelled, Weehaw, shot himself in the stomach, and threw the shotgun 30 fucking yards away from him. That was ruled a suicide. If you look up the lieutenant colonel, Colonel who was on site when um, Oklahoma City got bombed. He's the black man running in and out saving the kids. He was a whistleblower. He was so upset at himself. He called his wife and said, yo, baby, I'm going to meet you for dinner. I just got to shake this fed on my tail. Hung up the phone, beat himself up, slit his wrist, cut his throat, dragged himself through a fucking field, and beat himself up again to death. And that was ruled a suicide. Hmm. These are being ruled by suicides by sheriffs in corners. Highly regarded people. And they're signing off on this paperwork. Hmm. Right? So no, who's great. done that's a whistleblow? Right. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can look all that shit up. Yeah. Like and, you could look up Mark Middleton right now, and it'll yep. literally said he killed himself by hanging himself and shooting himself in the gut with a shotgun. Yep, and that was 2020. That's 20. Yeah, no, I remember that one. Mm. Yeah, so that's yeah. insane. So yeah, the fear of that's whistleblowing. That's insane. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to tell people. It's this easy to do. Right. It's this easy. Yep. Like that's disgusting. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, look at Boeing, right? So hundred uh, percent. Boeing is in a, in a deal right now where they got parts flying off, wheels are not good. They, you know, they, they, the FAA has found that they're using recycled parts and it's not up to code. Yeah. And the whistleblowers behind that, the two whistleblowers. Yep. Have both died. Yeah. Of natural causes. Yep. Here recently. Yeah. Natural right. cause wasn't lethal suicide. They, one guy was forty one, and the other guy was like fifty two. Yeah. They both died uh, shortly after they blew the whistle. Yeah. Hmm. Coincidence? I, yep. I, I'm just saying that's what happened. And Boeing's a huge DOD contractor. Yep. Don't get in our fucking way hmm. because the banks learned in 1913, 1917, 1930, and 1940 how to make big fucking money by starting wars, and they ain't slowing down. And they ain't slowing down. And that's not the first time. If you look up 1811, the Battle of Waterloo, where the U.S., our contract to a central bank run out, and the Rothschilds were like, yo, you're going to sign up again with us. And the U.S. was like, yo, no, we're not. Britain attacked the U.S., 
right? So it's not the first time banks had gotten involved in funding wars, mm. but because even when Napoleon was fighting and Rothschild owned a bank and he got the message first that Napoleon had lost, but he bullshitted everyone and said, no, Napoleon won. So the stock market crashed. He bought up a whole bunch of it. And then the actual news came in and was like, what the fuck are you guys sad for? Like we just beat Napoleon and it skyrocketed and he had bought it all on the cheap. Mm. Like it had been done before. But World War II was the start of the industrialization of the program that we've all lived through and the program that's now collapsing on top of us because the game is fucking over. 80 years later. It's over. Yeah. So it's we're been 80 years. Yeah. And so here we are current yeah, day. What right. happens now? <sighs> Dude. So we're going to go through it. We're going to go through it. Like great people are waking up. But there's just, you can't put brakes on this. Maybe we could have put brakes on it in the 80s and too 90s. Late. It's too late. Yeah, people are too busy, you know, saying conspiracy theorists and telling people they had opinions. It's too late. We're going through it. I don't know exactly where we're going. I'm anticipating economic collapse of some sort. I'm anticipating global war of some sort. You know, if you start to really I mean, pay... The, the globe's at war right now, though. Right? I would totally like, there's, agree there's with wars that. wars everywhere. Yeah, it's, I don't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but No, it's no, like please do. Yeah, Africa, no, I would. Europe, yeah, and even a everywhere. lot of, like, yeah, this, the experts who I would regard as, like, just, you know, spot-on people are saying history will write that World War II started now. You know, because, like, when you look back at, you know... World War One or two, they'll give like a defining moment. This guy got shot, boom, and it mm. went. But there was years of strife before that. Yeah. That's kind of I think where for we're World at War right Three, yeah, for this, this, this what's yeah. happening now is yeah, gonna be and the what is like a flashpoint where it's like on the news. World War Three has started because yeah. that's when like the cognitive dissonance people right. go, oh, now we're in World War Three, right? So, <clears throat> you know, I think it's gonna get bad before it gets worse, yeah, and then it'll get better. Mm. You know, bad to worse to better. But, you know, I also think that this, what makes this one different is the technology, yep. right? So when you've seen these other turnings, like we've talked about, or, you know, uh, so here's a great resource. If you really want a fantastic re resource, his name is David Astulin, E-S-T-U-L-I-N, David Astulin. Alex Jones regards him as more knowledgeable than what he is. So Alex Jones says, you're essentially a mentor to me. Right. So extremely smart guy. A stool in is commenting on the turnings. He's saying, <coughs> excuse me, that every other turning has had a model. All right. So this economic collapse is coming and the global elite know what model we're going into. He says the only other time in history when we didn't have a model is when Rome collapsed. Mm -hmm. When Rome collapsed, they went through 200 years approximately of chaos. And it was pretty wild right and then feudalism set in and feudalism was an easy sell at that point because people were sick and tired of 200 years of chaos he's saying now present day is the first time since rome collapsed that the turning <clears throat> is turning and there's no set model is he's it, saying is it because like and sorry to no like, no I'm, go ahead I'm yeah yeah in. no please because like, it gets boring when I just so, go on the tangents. So is there maybe there's not a model because and I'm this is a question. People have more access to this type of information that you're talking about today more than ever before, right? Like how are you finding this information? Like you know it's like so were people even getting this deep into thought processes or were he's people, saying were people there's no model the for past? it because. The elite who usually come up with the model are just scrambling, unprepared, don't really know. And you also have to take into account, like, this is third or fourth generation with some of these people. So you look at, like, wealth. Like, great-grandpa starts a business. Grandpa runs it. Dad does pretty well. Kid collapses mm -hmm. it. Like, we're, we're kind of leaning into some of these kids right now where this thing has mm -hmm. been passed down a couple generations or two. He's even disregarding, yeah, they have a language for central bank digital currency. They have a language for AI. They have a language for the control grid. He's like, but there's no model to merge everything. He's saying we're going into essentially an unknown. 
I don't know if that's for better or worse, but that's kind of where he'll stop his description. Hmm. I would almost prefer that than a, a definitive plan because it gives, yeah. it gives us more opportunity to intervene for militias to you know intervene and other things to change. Yeah, a little right. bit more control. What I worry about too, though, is the intervening of AI and what yeah. that looks like. Just seeing how rapidly it's already progressed. Yeah, just what we can do in this room and goof off and make right. you say that I didn't say or whoever. Right. Yeah, just to what totally. we can do. Yeah. You take that to a deep fake level, which we've talked about for a few years. Like, what mm-hmm. is that going to look like? Yeah. And then it also takes people with normalcy bias and cognitive dissidence where they'll go, I don't know anymore. I want to get into it. You're in charge of the truth. And then you're like, the fuck? They, they surrender. You just put this little small group of because you're already hearing people say, I don't care about your freedom of speech. I'll limit your reach. Yeah. Well, who the fuck are you to limit my reach? Well, I'm the safety police. Mm. Right. And I think there's a large group of people that will dive into the safety police aspect of that and go, yeah, oh, it seems pretty complicated. Just let someone else decide. So, in, yeah. So in other words, they're just, you know, giving up their power and saying, yeah, you, and you think, need to hold my hand here. Think about any of those people That's or beta. countries or movements that we've brought up in this discussion. If they had AI, digital dollar, the technology that we have, there just seems like there could be so much stickiness to a system or model And then how do you unstick that, you know, but then you also look, it does give people ability to like decentralize, but because the corporations for the past 80 years have become so centralized, Mm. like, it's not like you and I can just rub sticks together and make internet. Right. Like, I don't know. Like there's people like Mike Adams. He's the health ranger. He owns Brighteon TV, super smart guy. Yeah. He talks about these things where you can have like decentralized peer to peer chat and you need a node. It's shit's way beyond me. I'd be stuck, like, on a ham radio. Like, yeah. I don't know how the fuck to use a node. Yeah, and that's know? interesting, too, with the radio bit of it. Because I got a buddy that got his, like, radio license. It's free- nice. able to communicate via frequency. Sweet. Which is inter- how does he like it? it he, well, it's our Mark. You know, he loves oh, it. He's a he, yeah. super, super tech nerd. Okay. But, but it's a smart idea, right? Yeah. But even with that, it's almost like, you know, people think that's crazy. But to sit here and suggest that cell towers can't fail and that there's that communication could drop at any moment. Like having yeah. a, having a, a safety net for that, I think is brilliant. And I know you know you've done that with with a lot of things. Just power grid failure possibility. I know I've talked yeah. about that the past few years. Right. Very real possibilities. Yeah, I like having redundancies. Yeah. But this shit's also in my head all day long and has been for decades. So yeah. I'm like a redundancies kind of guy. Well, you know, you got those beams, you know, yeah. coming off that yeah, hat no, there. Totally. It's, yeah. it's I'm <laughs> channeling from the Akashic record. Right yeah. Now. That's how I'm hulking off in these <laughs> tangents. I'm just dialed right in. It's good to yeah. have conversations like this, though. Yeah. You I know? mean, and, and the thing is, if you don't have to believe shit that's coming out of my mouth, take the keywords mm. and put in a fucking search engine. Right. Look yourself. It's like Arthur said. Like, damn, I thought I knew a lot about World War II. I love watching World War II documentaries. Mm. And yet there's this whole other side to it, this 30-year lead-up. Then why in and, the hell and honestly, don't I know that? If they had a cool – so there is documentaries that I could find. Yeah, you can watch like, Europa, The Last Battle. That's hard to find, but – Is it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like they don't they don't want this type Correct. of information Correct. They don't want people finding the information. Easily no. accessible. And, right. and it's like – and like, you know, that's why episode, these type of episodes get demonetized and shit. It's because it's too real. And, and like I've, I've, real. I feel like the conversations yeah. in general – on the discussion combustion channel overall are like yeah. too real right. and don't fit don't fit this narrative of like perpetuating this drama yeah. and, and like all this shit and and it's like why is that real shit that is what Kevin and I want to do at, at least I could speak for myself is empower people like that's what I want to do is help empower people to take control of their lives and get out of the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical uh, food and medical industry loop that they're all fucking in cahoots with. Yeah. Like there's, there's all these different layers and it's like, like even if I wanted to find some of this real shit, it's going to be hard to even well, find. Well, so, and that's, so like, that's part of the thing. Cause then nuts. people hear right. all this and they're like, Oh my God, what do I do? I'm just going to bury my head in the sand. No, just make small changes. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you start with yourself, then you're, you're one, you're harder to kill. Right. Which is a great thing to be. And you're less controllable going to be small community if this mm. thing really falls the fuck apart lone wolves aren't going to make it it's going to be small communities yeah lone wolves will get ripped to shreds yeah there's no such thing as a lone wolf yep they show them <coughs> in hollywood because they want you yeah. to think that that's what you have to be it's all that. about a community yeah. i don't need a team yeah it's that's all bullshit. about a community it's yeah. about bringing together and going no 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 y'all we ain't going to do this let's get a stock on what we got let's figure this thing out yep that's how the, that's how it's going to work mm. Th- those are the ones that will survive. The, the civilizations that That's will survive. That's how it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, absolutely. Yeah. No, I agree with 100%. that. 100%. I agree with that. I've been, you know, I wouldn't call myself a prepper per se, but definitely once the, the bullshit started in 2020, that's when for me, like food reserves, you know, military rations, ammo, 
just basic things like going back to your point of making just simple take care changes. Of yourself. Just start and you know, think planning about for the freedom. Like your shirt says, the yep. freedom that you have to do that. Like, why would you complain about people doing that? Right. Look globally, the amount of people that wish they had extra stuff yep. and were or... blessed enough to have extra and be prepared. And why would you be proud that you're lenient on a system that for 80 years has been trying to fucking kill you? Right. Like get out of the system. That's mm-hmm. all you gotta do is just get out of the system. Yep. And you don't have to be a purist about it, right? Like, I like to drink beer. I don't care, mm-hmm. right? But I'm 80% healthy. You don't have to be a purist. Like, that's the thing. This, this idea of purity is part of the division, mm-hmm. right? And anytime you sway off the purity, you're this. Uh, here's an interesting tidbit. Do you know what year the word racist was coined, what year it was rep- weaponized? Mm-mm. I don't. No, I could take guesses, but go it's ahead. going to be loosely the racist. The word I'm coined. Gonna, coined. I'm going to go with the 40s. I'm gonna earlier. Say, I was going to say early 1900s. 1902. Okay. okay. And it was by a guy, and I don't know a lot about him. He was in the Civil War, and he was trying to get uh, Indians into white society. Mm-hmm. So he was assimilating them, and he coined the term racist. Trotsky, during the Bolshevik Revolution, weaponized the word. In 1879, Wilhelm Marr coined the word anti-Semitic. So the Bolsheviks were of Jewish ethnicity. So when the Russians weren't going along with communism, at first they got labeled an anti-Semitic and then a racist. And that's how they got all the people with normalcy bias and cognitive dissidents to go, I don't know, it's not really what I want. I heard maybe they're doing bad things to people, but I don't want to be a racist, so I'll just kind of go along with it. That's how powerful words are, Mm. and that's how powerful purity is, and that's how powerful not having courage is. Yeah, Yeah, not having courage, that's definitely a big one, because we're like lemmings in a lot of different senses. Humanity is. Totally. And and, and even even to like a very small... like you can you can test this everybody that's listening like you could test these type of things in your life like just look at a group of people and and if there's a overall opinion that most everybody's agreeing with like i've done it in the past i'm guilty and i'll be like oh yeah like i kind of just fall into the fold yeah but until you actually start noticing that you've done that right because most people just feel uncomfortable yeah so I, i tried to fit in yeah but so why do we need to fit in like fuck fitting in to society and like if you're i love that that your opinion is like looking at this stuff because it's like yeah that's not the mainstream uh uh, narrative and why fit into that anyway who's creating this narrative that is quote unquote the right way to think Mm -hmm. right like and and it's it's kind of all bullshit like i i really do feel like a lot of the stuff that we are encountering encountering nowadays is bullshit and to a certain extent, I just try to stay in my own lane. Like, I know it's fucked. I think it's foobar. But I just, I, I, I do have happiness in my existence. Like, it's not perfect. But, like, to a certain extent, that's because I stay in my own lane. Like, I don't, I don't get too far deep into all this shit or I don't think about it too much even though I know it exists. So then what, what would I be then? If I'm, like, if I know about it, I'm not doing much about it. Or, like, am I doing something by having this platform? So here's the other aspect to it. If you listen to Dr. Naomi Wolf, she's a doctor of uh, poetry. Dr. Naomi Wolf was on the Hillary Clinton campaign and was pushing to get Hillary elected to beat Trump, right? As soon as COVID came out, she has a history degree, so she's watched the rise of fascism and, and documented that. And she was like, yo, this ain't right. So she spoke out in her words, not mine. I got thrown off my cushy liberal media perch. They ousted her. Steve Bannon at War Room brought her on. They've been doing great work since. Dr. Naomi Wolf is Jewish and also just essentially a studier of religion. So she just has this really fantastic way about her, and she's thorough. She thinks more than anything, we're now in a battle of good versus evil. So we're beyond man-made atrocities. God's checked out and the devil's running the show. Paraphrasing for her. Mm -hmm. She's written some great articles on it. She's lecturing really well on it. So again, when people are like, wow, this is all so overwhelming. So what do I do? Like buy food and ammo and shit. Dude, you can do as little bit as just connect with the creator right now and start to push the bad shit out, Mm -hmm. and that's doing something. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something. In 
Bolshevik Russia, when it really kicked off and people were putting their heads down and not being a shining light, a lot of bad things happened. Mm-hmm. Right. If you go and flip through the Gulag Archipelago, which was rich, written by a guy named Shulton Nietzsche, he went to the Gulag. He has a really interesting quote where he says every night they would come and knock on one door and that person would leave. And then in the morning, we'd all convince ourselves, well, it wasn't me. Maybe they deserved it tonight. It won't be anyone. Then mm-hmm. another knock at the door. And before you know it, there's no yous left. It's only me. And now you're knocking at my door. Mm. Nobody stood up and did anything. And all it took was small pieces to stand up and do something. Yeah, it can be connecting with the creator, you know, getting yourself healthy and ready, cleaning the junk out of your mind, Mm. not arguing on social media. Like there's so many small steps that could be made to really tamper this thing down because they're fueling it right now they're pumping as much oxygen into that Mm -hmm. flame as you can that's why i don't run around and talk like this like you don't hear me talking like this on the day-to-day because some people just don't give a fuck yeah yeah, and that's fine i drop breadcrumbs and i know the people around me like three to five people will listen to me rant like this Mm -hmm. so i'm dropping breadcrumbs on them that's fine because i might change three out of the five and when i say change it's not hey i need you to think like me it's hey if you're a little more heads up, maybe you can change some shit in your own fucking life, mm-hmm. right? Maybe you stop taking pharma and a couple people around yeah. me have done that. You know, that's, maybe that's you a buy a little bit of food. I endorse that one. You know, maybe you're mm-hmm. gardening a little bit. When Mao took over China and his communist re- re- revolution, interesting enough, they, the people who run the show, took some of the successful Bolsheviks and brought them over to fucking China. That was Bush and his CIA brought Bolsheviks over to China and slammed them into China. And that's how Mao got his start. So it's all interconnected. In China, it was considered bourgeoisie or rich and wealthy to have a damn garden. And the little red coats, red shirts would run around and smash people's gardens because you were the oppressor if you had beauty. Hmm. So even doing small things in like beautifying stuff is pushing back against this movement. It's a good way. Uh, I like the way that's worded for sure. Control what you can control at the, at the end of the day, right? You're going to have to. Because there's only so much we can do. Yep. And when whatever's coming down the pipe, because I think we're headed towards an event where they're going to try and grab a lot of people together and swing the public consensus. Man, just watch what you're being asked to swing into and mm-hmm. maybe you should step out of the path. Yeah, I was, was going to say, because this, this has been a juicy episode, a, a great way to kind of like do a full circle is what is your predictions? Cause you've always kind of given us some predictions of what's going to yeah. happen next. How does this next year look before you're on DCPC again? Uh, man, if, if I, if I'm back on here in 2025, I'll feel super blessed and super thankful. Cause we'll have electricity. Uh, the cities won't be in chaos. We won't be in world war three. We'll all have enough money to be able to do this at our leisure and we won't be starving to death. I, I hate to say it, yeah. But, you know, um, so here's an interesting thing that I saw on October 7th. The one big reason I would have never voted Republican growing up is Republicans were always very attached to the structure, the system. No, no, no. Cops are good. Intelligence community, good. FBI, good. Military, good. They can't be corrupt. They're moral institutions. That was kind of the way they viewed the country. People like myself would have said, no, no, no. They're corruptible. And if or when they corrupt, it'll get really bad because they're the power structures, right? When Trump came into office, one of the really special things Trump did is he took lifelong Republicans and showed them how corrupt the systems had been because the system started to push back on their guy. So all of a sudden they were like, whoa, dude, I can't believe the FBI tapped the White House or the presidential candidate. Wait, what? Operation Crossfire? Operation Hurricane? Dude, the media is a system. The media is good, but yet here they are lying through. Like it really kind of shook them to their core. And then we get into COVID and all these lifelong Republicans were like, holy shit, we're really starting to get it. Okay, we get it. Holy shit. The systems went after Trump and now pharma. Oh my gosh. And then you saw a lot of them not get duped by the Ukraine. And I was really proud of that. I was like, dude, 
Finally. Because these are the people who got duped. We're going to go get the Muslims. Like, we're Iraq 1 and Iraq 2 and Afghanistan. Weapons like, of mass destruction. Oh, dude, they were ready to go always, right? And they didn't bite on Ukraine. So here we are. Like, all right, people are getting it. People are getting it. And then October 7th happens. And all that progress got flushed down the toilet. Because... No, 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 guys. Okay, okay, guys. I get it. CIA, uh, labs, and viruses, and Fauci, and corruption, but not over here. Now it's Israel. So all everything I'd been, boom, poof, right back to it. Yep. Right back to it. What's my point in saying that? My point in saying that is right now we're awakening a lot of people. A lot of people are starting to get it, starting to get it, starting to get it. But if those people who are really getting it and saw all that corruption and then, boom, October – Israel came out and said, yes, we knew about it for a year. Uh, yes, we ignored it and told people to stand down. And yes, our troops are trained to shoot pretty much everyone in that situation. And we cause some of the deaths. That's a known factor. And people have just thrown that out. My point in saying all this is what event could happen from now until the election that takes all this massive awakening and just flushes it down the toilet? Because mm. if they could do it to that many people with October 7th, they can do it to more people with some other event. So what event is that? I don't know. Yeah. But we've heard people talk about disease X. We've heard people talk about how the new disease is going to you know, affect children. I mean, think about all the people who now get big pharma if there's a bunch of kids dropping dead from a manufactured virus, how many people are going to line their asses up for the vaccine and go, look, I get it. Vaccines are bad, but fucking a man, I would say more than none. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, how many people that are like, all right, cool. I've been like this, you know, I call them the turnkey liberals, the people who got into politics when Trump came on the scene and they just had to grunt orange man bad and bang around on the keyboards. All right, man, I was a turnkey liberal for years, and I thought Trump was the worst thing ever, and now I'm finally realizing that he wasn't, and I'm kind of getting it. And then the FBI and CIA sets off a fucking bomb in the city, and they go, white supremacist did it. Oh, all right, so I was thinking about Trump finally in a positive light, but now, fuck it, I'm right back to where I was at. Mm -hmm. I think there's things that could really swing the consensus massively yeah. that have not come to light yet. That's my point in that yeah. rant. Yeah. I can see all that, too, because I, I think the same thing. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. It, yeah. it has to be. You know, it has to be. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people thought it was going to be the hush money trial. That Honestly, all that did was help them. Um, it's going to have to be something more massive than that. Yeah, I think it's big, um, you know, whether it's them taking Trump out. You know, I could see that. Yep, I've heard um, that. I could see a huge domestic false flag internally to just get us going at each other again. Because now at this point, again, it was like, you know— Democrats versus MAGA and even Republicans, oh, I hate MAGA. And now everyone's kind of like, oh, man, maybe we should vibe a little. Like, yep. fuck, like the system's against us all. What does it take to just split that? Mm. And I think COVID was a proving ground for what they can do. And I think October 7th was a proving ground that they can get people to pivot like True. that right back uh, into old habits. Yeah. I really uh, on do. a global scale, too, yeah. not just an American scale. Yeah, 100%. Because both those things have affected globally, mm -hmm. totally not have. just American yeah. politics. Yeah, yeah, and it's more, I mean, once you understand Operation Gladio, it's just more of the same bullshit. Yeah. It's more of the same That's bullshit. Crazy. So I don't know what's coming down the pipe. I just say, you know, for Pete's sake, like, you know, have some resources yep. available. We're in for a bumpy ride. Yep. If you look at, um, if you read, it's like a 30 page article in time magazine, post 2020 election, they put it on the cover of the magazine and then 30 page article, they openly admitted to how they stole the election. So I hate to break it to people if you don't know, but the fucking election was fucking stolen. Google time magazine election article. It's on the fucking cover of the fucking magazine. And they tell you how they stole it. But of course there's soft disclosure. So it was like, we had to, structure the election uh we we added integrity due to fascism right so if you can get through that bs they literally admit mm. how they stole it the same people who did that just wrote an article in rolling stone and said don't worry we got a superstructure for this election right and then if you notice mike gallagher and ken buck republicans in the house mm -hmm. both resigned why did they do that why did they resign after april 9th you know i do not know why ken buck resigned because they it's their term is considered settled and they don't get replaced with someone else and on january 6th essentially what january 6th was all about 2021 was the election was corrupt 
um, Congress can meet and vote it back to the state legislatures. They can analyze it. Well, they're saying that now it's tilted enough where there's not a re- enough Republican support and they cannot certify the election in case Trump wins. And that's why those fucking people are resigning late is they don't get replaced. And now the majority is tilted and they're talking about not certifying the election. Then if Trump gets in, the DOD, the Pentagon, just released an MSNBC wrote an article on it where the Pentagon is saying, don't worry. We're fortifying ourselves. So even if Trump wins, there's a whole coalition of us and we ain't going to listen to him. He's the commander in fucking chief. He runs that shit. And they're already saying we're not going to listen to him. And they're openly announcing that. Yeah. So even if he wins and they can't rig the election, then we have to get then you would have to get through certification. And then even if he gets certified and he's still alive and he gets in the DOD and the intelligence community is a fourth arm of government, which they shouldn't be. They're going to say there's going to be a fifth, and they're saying that they're going to take away his privilege to dispatch the National Guard. If they do that and riots blow up from the NGOs and non-for-profits who fund riots and did during Black Lives Matter, that's also a fact, right? Where's the National Guard going to come from? Trump will say, deploy them, and the State governors will say, ah, I'm not supposed to. Like, that division in conflict, right. can you even imagine? Yeah, that'd be total chaos. Uh, just complete chaos. Yeah. I have a person who I talk like this to, and she has a direct contact in the DOD. Not that I have contacts or anything, but she does. We had this conversation, and she said, my contact in the DOD said they're absolutely aware of it, and there's also coalitions built to push back. We're talking best-case scenario is the DOD slams against each other to get this thing figured out on who's really running the show over there. Mm. That don't sound like a great bet. No, it doesn't. Either way, there's really no positive outcome to either either scenario. Yeah, so my point in all this is I think it's going to get chaotic by design. It's going to have to get chaotic, and then it's going to go one or two ways. I don't know the timeline on mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think if people don't see it right now and go, because look at it right now today and look back where you thought you were five years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago. If we were having the same conversation, you would have told me I was full of fucking shit. Well, now we're here. So if we're here and I'm telling you we're going to get here and you're still telling me I'm full of fucking shit, maybe we're just not paying attention. Yeah. Mm. So, I don't know. Yeah, could be better said. There's a yeah. lot there. Yeah, there's a lot there. And uh, there's been a lot. It's been under our nose. Yeah. You know, I think people need to do their own research. They need to make their own educated uh, you know, opinions on what's going on. And, you know, like we talked about, not not have your hand held. You know, well, just come with me. Yeah. Everything will be fine over here. Yeah. You know, go sit in the corner where it's less chaotic. Yeah. And bring in a whole bunch, man. Don't worry about the purity of it. Yep. Just bring it all in because you're going to need it. This information is disappearing rapidly. Yeah. So. And that's concerning. You know. Don't trust what everybody tells you. Make up your own decisions. That's really what I think. Yeah, and go read like 15 important. articles because mm-hmm. even yeah. if you read like an article, like if you pull up Bolsheviks <clears throat> and you say, you know, because it's a touchy subject, right? We're Bolsheviks, Jewish, Jewish ethnicity. I'm not saying shit about Jewish people. Right. I'm just saying that, right? You look that up, the first three articles, are right, you click on one, and it's from the Bolshevik Memorial Museum in Russia. The first three paragraphs are saying how it's anti-Semitic and racist. And, and then by the fourth paragraph, it's like, but yeah, no, they absolutely were. Okay, so it is a fact. It's objective reality. They were Jewish ethnicity. So I'm not saying anything anti-Semitic or racist. I'm just stating a fact. Mm-hmm. Yes, they were. And then the article goes on. So you also got to watch the layout <clears throat> of these articles. That's true. And most people don't make it to paragraph five, six, or seven. No, they don't even make it to the article. They read the headline. The headline. Yeah. Mm. And you're like, even news organizations, news that I like, I sit there and I'm like, dude, I clap back all the time, dude. Like, I go in the comments and hit the writer up, and I'm like, yo, you missed a spot. Yeah. Mm. What are you doing, dude? Well, yeah, media is just competition for views. It's an entertainment industry. Yeah, That's what it is. 100%. Mainstream media is an entertainment industry. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's It's like the WWE. Yeah, it is. It really is. So I don't know. There's a bunch of statistics out there on where we're at. I think it's just going to get rocky. You know, I think our generation and the subsequent generations, you know, are going to have an interesting uphill 10 to 20 year journey. Yeah. You know, and then as long as the AI control grid doesn't collapse on us, you know, we'll probably have a chance to like make something really special. 
But, you know, we'll see Denver just announced they're throwing up full-time drones. 12 counties in Colorado just announced they're throwing up full-time drones. If you drive around Littleton, Highlands Ranch, start to look at the street lights and you see the street lights, look for the one with the big cylinder on top. That's part mm-hmm. of the smart city movement. Those, if you count where they're placed, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. That's the grid that's being built. And those things are not only pinging your cell phone, but when your cell phone contains the QR code that they want in your digital wallet, in your digital dollar, that's going to be reading you the whole way through, transmitting to the grid who and what you are and how stable you are, your mm-hmm. body temperature, your attitude, what podcast you're listening to, all that shit's going up right now. Mm-hmm. It's the, crazy, man. The sheriff came out in that article for Rapo County, and he was like, yeah, I don't know. It's just how it's going to be. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? It's, I didn't vote for that shit. Right. I didn't vote for all these yeah. fucking drones well, yeah, up in the air. Yeah, the smart city, well, they didn't sell it that way. Right. right? That's not, they, it's safety. Exactly. It's safety it's because they the defunded safety of the, the police, and they let 50,000 illegal blueberry pickers in right. who have nothing to do other than rob people and start crime, and now all of a sudden crime's exploding. They're like, oh, well, here's your solution. Yeah, exactly. I don't want more government for my solution. I want less people in the country and more Americans in the country. Yeah. But when, like, you know, when there's you're a great that solution, to, you know, average suburb America, they're going, oh, wow, this is great. My kids are going to be protected from the filth. 100%. Let's put it up there. I get behind 100%. it. We don't even know what it's going to do. 100%. I mean, that seems to be the American They're going way. up everywhere. I'm watching oh, them yeah. go up left and right. Look for the cylinders on top of the streetlights. That's what that's for. Hmm. I wonder what organization is, is building that. Like, who's contracting the builders for those? I don't know. I bet if you looked up, you know, like T Mobile, the, the large company that owns T Mobile. I'm sorry, I can't pull that one out of my head right now. They Deutsch, crashed again this week. Deutsch, um, they got the contract through the UN to have the global digital wallet a few years ago, so they've been hammering that out. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then Australia just announced they're going full digital, no cash in the bank starting October of this year. 94 countries are tinkering around with a CBDC, and SWIFT, who operates all the banks and is the clearinghouse outside of BRICS just announced that within 12 to 24 months, they'll be able to connect all the CBDCs around the world and fire them up as a clearinghouse. When you watch BRICS, BRICS is now, you know, pulling together commodities. So they're going to try and base a new currency off commodities, which is another thing I'm keeping my eye on. Hmm. You know, how long does the dollar really last? How long can it last? I've had my eye on that for a long time. Yeah. Right. With oil, you know, or free energy, you know, or even bricks popping up like our dollar is not based on anything other mm. than hopes and dreams. Hopes and dreams. That's right. <coughs> In war. Yeah. Right. So hence the war coming back. Hmm. You know, but man, to me, it's just simple things, man. You know, get the canned foods, get the yep. water, like pray, you know, go on a walk, meditate, mm. you know, like do something that's pushing back like the whole crowd's flowing in one way and be like i might step over here a little bit yep you know i think traditionalism making a little bit of a comeback right now i think so too we we just see it happening even within the young community yeah it is interesting to watch some of the youngsters kind of vibe into it's weird but it's it's also refreshing Hmm. i think it's super refreshing yeah 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 it's yeah it's good we need it yeah. We need it. Control what you can control for sure. Cause there's a lot of bullshit out there. The sugar, the, the sex, the pornography, all the mm-hmm. filth out there that's keeping everyone distracted. The Netflix programs, you yeah. name it. It's easy to get pulled in and go down complacent. But Boulevard. even look at like previous in the conversations where, you know, Arthur was like, but yeah, I don't get it. Kind of like the 1960s thing. Like look at what pornography was 40 years ago, 50 years ago, where it was just like a gal and like mostly mm-hmm. clothed, like, Oh look. And now it's like smut. Oh, oh. yeah. Dude, like Laura Logan, I always get them confused because Laura Logan, I really like Laura Loomer, gets on my nerves. Laura Logan was just on Alex Jones. She's fantastic. If you want an incredible resource, follow Laura Logan. You know, and she's commenting on some of the stuff that you can find on the dark web, which I'm not even going to repeat. Mm. It's it's violence. It's nasty. It's violence mm. being passed off as pornography, and that's came over time through nudge units, through decreased morality, and, well, you like this, but I like this. I don't really think that's right, but um, you do you kind of mentality, and now it's, like, sweeping into, like, just really nasty stuff. Mm-hmm. 
you know, the dark arts, dark yeah, we arts. We have to protect yeah. our mentality. As I do agree with that. Yeah, and it's the it's dark a, arts are looming. It, I mean, it is, and, and that's part of like Naomi's angles. Wolf mm-hmm. is point right where, dude, like that's not even human. Like that's not even a pleasure area. <clears throat> like that's just strictly demonic. Mm-hmm. Like that's not even a pleasure sensor. Like you're hurting yourself and hurting others. Like for joy, but the inverse of joy. Hmm. Like that's just far beyond a human experience, mm. you know? So I think it's super interesting. It is. Yeah. yeah, it is. And there's a whole, whole nother conversation on that topic alone, of course. So. Yeah. I mean, any of them, a- any you could of dive them. into any of this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Take a leg and go on for an hour on yeah. it. Yeah. And I just think that that's super important. And I just think knowledge is power. And if it people is. just better understood and less like you were saying with the suburban people, yeah, just give me this, give me that. Just go out and work for something. Like right. put your mind and body to something mm-hmm. and be your own, you know, center of like just bringing it in and knowing more about what's going on. That in itself is going to make an epic mm-hmm. difference. And that's going to be the communities that roll through the next thing into, you know, a Stulens point. You know, those are the people that have an opportunity to make the new model. Be it the, won't be the people that go with the group because oh, the group not. will be pushed into the not no. model. The group sitting on the back, you know, patio there with their Amazon dropping their their packages in. Yeah, that's what I mean. Ultimately, that's what they want. Stay home. Don't need to leave. We'll deliver your alcohol, your food, your Amazon packages. Yeah, the porn your, pod. Your, your porn. Yeah, your porn. Your sex toys. Yeah, don't worry. Stay home. Right. It's coming your way. Yep. Mm. Don't look over here. Yeah. everything's fine. We're yep. taking care of your neighborhoods. Your 100%. kids are safe. We're getting educated. Yeah. So that's that's where it's at. And that's like Fahrenheit 451 meets Brave New World meets 1984. Yep. Interesting fact. And then, you know, we can wrap this up whenever you guys are ready. The guy who wrote Brave New World, Huxley, Adox Huxley, his brother Julian, he wrote a Brave New World in 1931 or 1932. Post-World War II, his brother Julian started the UN a year after the CIA was founded. When Adox Huxley was passing away in the 1960s, he rewrote Brave New World, added a chapter or two, and said on his deathbed, this is not fiction, it's a prediction. This is what we all talked about. This is the game plan. This Hmm. is the map, and this is the way that we're taking you. Hmm. Interesting. The choice is yours. There's there's a lot that if I was to go back and re-listen to this that I'd be like, okay. Pause. I'm, I'm look it that, up. Yeah, yeah. Pause. Look it up. And that's what I we hope encourage it's people to do. I hope it's helpful. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, there's no way we're gonna be able to get all that in the show notes. Yeah. So for the folks that are just you know thumbing through the episode, and technically nothing yeah. I said tonight was even inflammatory. Right. Mm. At all. Yeah. It no, might. It might. It might knock your normalcy biased a little bit. Sure. Nothing I said tonight was inflammatory or controversial at all. I literally just stated facts. Yeah. And gave I a t- literally gave a just line. stated facts, and if facts piss you off. Man, you might want to jump in the Wayback Machine and go join them folks in, in, in Russia early <laughs> on because they didn't like facts either. Well, I, I got a good feeling that you will be back on the couch next year. Man, let's go. I, I have, I have yeah. a good go. feeling about that. We'll be eating Kevin's MREs, just yeah, hanging out <laughs> under candles, years. and I'll bring my solar generator yeah. and our ham radios, and we'll just power to the people. Yep. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Either way, we'll be talking in a yeah. year. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. We, you know, no matter what happens. Thanks to your audience, as always, for your time. I'm sure it's painful every time, but for those <laughs> no, of you that have so. suffered through the doom loop, tin tinfoil hats off to you. Yeah. No, it's always good having you on. Always an interesting conversation. And there's always a couple of new perspectives that I pick up. Yeah. So some different ways of thinking and looking at things. Um and I had some. I feel like I had some questions that I was like, okay, I was starting to get like curious about because this stuff is always it is really curious, right? And because we're all, it affects all of our lives if all of this stuff is like what it is said to be, right? So it is important. Thank you for tuning in. We're gonna keep coming at you. Tune in to Happy Friday tomorrow. And Mike, a pleasure having you. And good man. to see you, man. Yeah, thank you guys. Let's get together before the next pod, huh? Yeah, let's do it before the before the collapse of the power grid. Let's let's, let's, do let's it. hang out, man. Let's do it. Let's I'm do down. it. Yeah, I'm down. That sounds right. good. Yeah. All right, guys, we're out of here. Happy Friday's coming your way tomorrow. It's my birthday weekend. It's gonna be a good time. Be good to yourselves. You deserve it.